Six Ages Gaming is brought to you by GamersGauntlet.net. Check them out for all your singles, sealed product, and play mats. Hey guys, welcome to another Six Ages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Today I have for you Mick Questions Valentino 1.0 deck that he's playing in the Dual Series this week, and you'll see that video up tomorrow. Uh, this deck is just absolutely fun. I mean, it's unfortunate how the couple of flips went in the uh, Dual Series videos, which you guys will see. But really the core of this deck is abusing Valentina's uh, ability where she can put something into play two or less at instant speed. One allows you to play things around things like Wall of Wind and Seals, but it also allows you to play things like Drill Sergeant and Musician because if you look, there's only four targets that don't hit for those cards. So you get to play this game where you're flashing a lot of two drops, they all have effects, you're either destroying Regalia, bouncing your Resonator, getting a huge beater out of it, drawing cards off you know, the eight cards that draw cards or you're just bouncing more of your opponent's stuff. And it lets you set up this board where you get to then play Drill Sergeant, attack, and the combination of Drill Sergeant and Shangri-La, you get to swing for a lot of damage. So this deck was uh, pretty great to see. First we'll talk about the Ruler, then we'll get into the Stone Base, which will take all of 10 seconds, uh, and then we'll get into the cards that he played in the main deck. So up first we have Valentina, the Princess of Love. As I mentioned, she has the uh, ability for just two Water Will to be able to put a Water Resonator, total cost two or less, from your hand into play. And again, this is very, very strong if there's, you see a, a control heavy meta that's playing a lot of counter spells, because you can negate any, anywhere between four to eight cards in, in their deck when you're operating at this instant speed and through her ability. And the one at the end is that her judgment is, has a cost of two. On her other side, she does a lot of good things as well. Uh, she's a 5-5, which might not seem impressive, but she gains plus 100, plus 100 for every card in your hand. She can't be hurt on your turn. And also, she has a really sweet God Art ability where you get to steal their best thing, or best resonator, I guess you should, should specify. So another cool thing about this is when you go to attack, let's say you have you know, all these cards in hand, you can God Art whatever they have, get it out of the way, get through for some damage, and then maybe if it has swiftness or something, you can kill their own uh, kill your opponent with their own resonator, especially if they have like a Lancelot that has necromancies on it or what have you. So this ruler definitely does uh, add a lot to this deck, but most of the time that you're going to be playing here, it's going to be on the front side for her first effect. Now going into the stone base, and again this is just something that we played on on camera, so it's just going to be all these water stones. Uh, Ten water stones. Now as a note, there's a couple different things. I want to keep the list the same as we showed in the video, but there definitely could be four uh, of the Machina's Memoria that's in the next set, taps for blue, blue, and then for blue one and tapping that stone, you get to draw a card, discard a card. Because we're operating at instant speed, and if we would, might not always have a card that we want, or like Harazar are somehow dead in the matchup, we can draw and discard them. So that's definitely something that I would consider adding. Yes, it makes our invasion party a little bit weaker, but I think that's okay for the added benefit that you're going to get. Now going into the main deck, we have four Alice's Little Cutie Patootie, or Alice's Little Scout. Uh, so this is just a 200, 200 when it dies, you draw a card. Obviously it's a water resonator, so it's going to get buffed by Shangri-La. And it's, it's just very important in this deck that you have both a turn one and turn three play to have it as in a one drop, and you can leave up the activation for Valentina. So playing uh, eight one drops in this deck is pretty important. The other one drop of choice is the Musician of Shangri-La. And especially if you play this guy and then you're going to have like a Wear Rabbit on two or something to bounce the Resonator, this guy just being able to get in for 500 damage on turn two or sometimes 700 if you play Shangri-La, uh, it really just lets you push in that little bit extra damage and really start pressuring your opponent's life total early. Again, these guys can get pretty big, uh, pretty out of hand, pretty big, pretty quick, especially if your opponent isn't really paying attention or recognizes it. So now we'll get into the two drops, which is more or less the bread and butter of the deck. Uh, four Squire of the Ocean Lady. It's a 4-4 when it enters the battlefield draw card. So again, the allure of this deck is that you know half the deck basically says draw a card or replaces itself. So you're always going to have a full hand. You're always going to have options on what you want to balance and things of that nature. So having these cards that, again, they get buffed by Shangri-La. You get to play them at instant speed uh, through Valentina's ability. And they also replace themselves are just a great mix of cards. Uh, to be playing, and they allow you to get this advantage over the course of a game. For Harris, not too much needs to be said about this card. 5-5 five, five body enters a battlefield, destroy target regalia, that's zero, cost of zero. Uh, with, with everyone playing Rulers of Moria, this is just a very, you know, if we're playing this deck, this is just a snap four include, because it turns out everyone's going to have some kind of regalia that we care about destroying. So, again, just another card that basically reads, comes into play, destroys something, and draws a card. 
Uh, four Muse. Again, this card's great. Now, we don't play um, Shion, so we don't get to see the top card, but again, you just have to name Resonator, and everything except four cards in the deck is Resonator. Now, the joke is, if you watch the video tomorrow, you'll see how bad uh, McQuestion got burned on this, but again, it is such a low probability that you're not going to hit a Resonator when you call Resonator. It's just laughable at how it turns out. So it's the card's fine, and when you when you combo with Shangri La to buff all your resonators to the point where you know you have to kill them in one hit, and they can't use this like little incremental damage. Muse and Shangri La can really start beefing up your team and make sure they have survivability. Uh, so the one proxy card that we're using, four eight four, uh, Shion the Liberator of Shangri La, another two drop five five body. That's fine. But she enters the battlefield, you get to draw a card if you have less cards than your opponent. Now that part isn't always going to be accurate, because as I said, we have all these cards that like to draw us cards. So that might not always happen. But what she can do is that for uh, ping of water attribute, tapping her, and discarding a card, you get to bounce another resonator to the owner's hand. So this is going to be great for a number of reasons. You can, make your, you can survive your own stuff if they, for whatever reason, you need to bounce from your own guys. But really what this is for is bouncing their best resonator in either in combat or at the end of the turn, one of those things just so you can get through damage on the next turn. Now having this constant source of bounce is also great because if we have, again, Shangri Lab using all this stuff building up, it makes it very hard for your opponent to remove. And again, just one Shangri La will make most of your deck automatically survive a um, space-time anomaly or something of that nature. So that's really great when you start stacking Shangri Las and making your stuff really, really tough to, to deal with. And again, we have 12 cards or something that say draw a card, so this is actually an effect that we can uh, use reasonably well. Speaking of bouncing more things, and as a card that was extremely annoying to play against, uh, Were Rabbit of the Aqua Moon. Uh, when it comes into play, you get to bounce something that's two cost or less, and it's a 3 3 body. Again, this is probably the only deck that it's, it's really that great in, uh, because you can play it on their turn, so you can essentially time walk or skip your opponent's turn if they play any two drop and simply pass. You get to play this on your on your turn when you left the will up for it, bounce it back to the hand, then you have let's say a 3-3 three, three on the field plus whatever one drop you played and then on your next turn you can play Shangri-La if you want to just to get them more damage or play another one drop and get in some extra damage. So it's a great card all around especially when you can cast it at instant speed. The true uh, Beefcake of the deck, or Beater, Overlord's Invasion Party. Uh, so it's a 3-3, and then it gets plus 100, plus 100 for each Water Magic Stone you have. So this is the point where playing 10 Water Stones uh, is really important, or you can just play 20 if you really want to. Like, there's no difference between 10 or 20. The, the, the thing is, if we're being honest, you're probably not going to get past 10 Water Stones in this deck anyways. Um, if you do, either you or your opponent won at that point. But yeah, if you really want to, technically you should be playing uh, 20 Water Stones with this card. Going into our last Resonator, we play 4 of Drill Sergeant. And again, this guy is just great because uh, only 4 non-actual targets are in the deck. So more often than not, you're going to be able to Anthem up your team, give them all plus 300, plus 300. And then if you have a Shangri-La, they're all getting plus 500. And you can see we're getting in that little extra bits of damage. Uh, I mean, 500, 500 is nothing to scoff at. Even 300, 300 is fine. You get to flood the board, play Drill Sergeant, attack out with all these guys and it can really, really add some good damage to the board and pressure your opponent's life totals. And then lastly, the card that uh, <laughs> caused me to question some issues. Uh, we have four Shangri-Las. Uh, when it comes to play, you get to draw a card, so again, it replaces itself, that's super important. And then it has two different lines of attacks, but basically what happens is you're going to have five or more cards in your hand for the entirety of the game. So this card really reads, give all your water resonators plus 200, plus 200, and draw a card when it comes into play. So overall, just a great addition to have if we're playing this deck. So I would definitely be playing uh, Valentina with some number of Shangri-Las and what have you. Uh, so that's all I have for this deck spotlight, guys. Uh, like I said, make sure you check out the video tomorrow so you can see uh, my question playing it. Uh, it's Unfortunately, I think the matchup that we prepared for it, it was a pretty good counter to it with Escort of the Fairy King. So sorry about that, but I think this is definitely... You know, it's definitely more of a budget deck, I will say that as well. So if you're looking for a deck to play at Locals, or if you want to build a deck to give to someone so they'll play in your Locals, I mean, if you buy the Valentina starter deck, you get a lot of these cards, and then the rest are either commons or rares. I mean, yeah, four super rares of the next set, uh, that's fine. But, I mean, you can, this is another one of those decks where you can build pretty re easily under 40 bucks, I'd have to guess. And it's just a way to get more cards into more players' hands and get them playing at your Locals. So I can't stress enough... 
you know, give people a deck like these to play so they can get into Forceful, they can get excited about playing it, and we have these sweet theme decks. Now, I know we're going to have starter decks coming out very soon as well, and that's also going to be another great opportunity for doing that. So keep that in mind as you're looking for ways to build your locals. So, again, shout out to McQuestion for brewing this deck for this week. Thank you guys for watching. Let us know what you like about the deck, what you don't like about the deck, what would you change. You know, would you put the Leviathan in there and maybe just go up to 20 water stone deck and just have at it? You know, let us know in the comments section below. But otherwise, make sure you like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff to our channel so we can, you know, keep spreading the word and doing what we're doing. We greatly appreciate all your uh, subscriptions and follows and all that good stuff. Make sure to follow us on Twitter at well, as well at Six Ages Gaming. And again, thank you guys for all the support. We have the five, our 5,000 subscriber video give, giveaway that's going very, very soon. So make sure you get in on that as well to win some sweet Ultimate Guard products or some free stuff from Gamers Gauntlet boxes of the next set. So until next time, guys, thank you very much for watching, and we'll catch you on the next Six Sages Gaming Deck Spotlight. Have a good one. Thank you so much for watching. Be sure to hit that like button and leave us a comment with what you thought of the video. Don't forget to subscribe to Six Sage Gaming and check out some of the deck spotlights, dual series, and force of community videos that are already on the channel. We also have a Facebook and a Twitter, so feel free to find us there. Lastly, if you have a deck that you would like featured in a video, be sure to drop us a comment below. Until next time, take it easy.